just come back around. There we are. That's the, that's the sort of tricky bits to get sorted. So when it comes to doing a spoon then, um, first thing, before we start, we're marking out with a vertical grain. So that's one of the first things to remember. And what we do, you can put, this is just an easy method that you can have a go at. Put a line across the center and you're gonna carve into that line. So we'll carve into the line there and we'll carve into the line there and there. That's where we're going. Around the outside, I'm gonna mark out a line and the idea is that we are gonna work into the middle line, but we're gonna work back to our outside line. So that is just demonstrating, that's just gonna, we're just gonna do an, an easy demonstration of carving, hand carving, the bowl of a spoon. There we are, so that's roughly the shape that we're gonna go for, just like so. The gouge that I'm gonna use is this one here. And it's a curved gouge, it's a nice gouge, that one there. Hopefully we can just pick it up on the, on the camera there. And what you basically do, you mark your grain out vertically so you're predominantly working with the grain of, of the woods. If you're doing other wood carvings, you have to try and assess how you can mainly be working with the grain of the woods. So we start working into the center. So we're carving with the grain. And I'm gonna work into the center and back to our outside line. So that's the process that we're going through. Keep working your way back and using those lines that we've marked to guide us. Now there's no, there's no sort of need to carve those lines if you don't want to. I've included them because a lot of you are gonna be starting out and it's difficult to shape just by eye. That's not straightforward. So to use guidelines like that, it is just a method that hopefully will help you to get a nice shape on your bowl without having to do it all freehand. Because when you start wood carving, for any of you who are learning wood carving or for anyone who's interested in learning wood carving, uh, this, this is just a simple method that you can use to do that. There we are. We're just going to move it over as well. We're just going to change the over to there. Okay. So we just just adjusted the computer two seconds. That's what we've done there. And now we're going to go and working again into that centre line, just like so. But we're working in the direction of the grain because we've marked it out with a vertical grain. So you can see it's working to that center line and back to our outside line. And all the time we get in the depth on our carving. We're getting a little bit of extra depth by working into the center, but we're also getting a nice shape. We're getting a nice shape on our wood carving. Yeah, Dad's just here as well, and he's just pointing out that if you need to use a bit of extra pressure, if you need a bit of extra force, you can um, you can use a mallet. If you haven't got a mallet, you can use a block of wood, something like that. So we're just starting to get our shape of our bowl, and we're starting to get that depth as well. Once we've got the shape and the depth on our bowl, what you can do, and what I do, what we do here at the workshop, we use sandpaper to give it a nice smooth finish. And this goes back where we actually worked with a gentleman. He was, um, he was blind and 
he actually came in and made his own love spoon here. And he, um, for him, the, the feel, the touch of the spoon was one of the most important things. So he taught us a lot working with him because he, he actually helped us to improve the finish of our spoons. Because that, that touch, that feel was, was something that was very important to him. So yeah, as you can see, we're getting that shape on our bowl and we're getting our depth and we're just finishing it off. And what you find when you're beginning, um, you get all these sort of wispy bits left over and what I've done there is to turn it round in the vise where you can just take away all those little extra bits that are left over. You just take it up, take it off like so and that just tidies up. That tidies up the finish then that we're getting on our spoon. Now to be honest with you, that's already, that's quite a nice finish that we've got on there. I'm going to do something that I wouldn't recommend any beginner doing, which is carving towards yourself. Remember when you're starting, ideally both hands behind the blade and cut away from yourself. That's preferable. That's what you're looking for. We've got our glass paper here, so we're just going to sand just like so, there we are. So we're just gonna sand a little bit in like so, and there, just carve in like that. I just, sorry, sand in that shape. That'll give you a more smooth finish. But again, that's personal choice. If you don't wanna sand, you don't have to. So that's the first part of this demonstration then, is to show you how to carve the bowl of a spoon. So the basic things, just to recap, you mark out your wood with a vertical grain. So you're predominantly working with the grain. In terms of the tools, we've got a gouge with a curve on it. You use that gouge to go into the center line that we marked and work back to the outer line that we also marked. One thing I'm going to do as well, because we're going to demonstrate finishing the spoon, I'm going to take out the pencil lines that remain, because we don't want them in when we shellac it. There we are, just take it out like so. In regard to safety then, we recommend you securing, whatever you're working on, secure it in a vise or use a clamp, hold it down in some way so it doesn't all start moving about because it's twofold it can be distracting to you um and it, it it also then it allows you to get both of your hands onto the the tools that you're working with it allows you to be able to 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 basically carve more safely and as we're saying keep both hands on the the gouge and cut away from yourself now as we move into doing the actual detail on the spoon we start off with our stop cuts. So the stop cuts are where you cut down into the wood. So you can see I'm just carving down into the wood like so. So we're just cutting down into the wood, bum bum, like so, okay? And that creates a barrier for us to work from. So as we carve down into the woods, that will allow us later on to give depth. It gives depth to our carving. It creates the shape that we're looking for. So you can see we've marked out a heart shape and we will then use that i just demonstrate it instead of trying to explain it. You can use that as a barrier. So you then cut into that edge, just like so. There you go, you can see, we're just cutting into that edge like so. So again, as we continue, we're just doing those stop cuts. And if we'd have marked out the grain where it, it was running, say, horizontally, there's a couple of reasons why that can cause you a problem. The first issue 
is strength because we've got a stem on the spoon here and that stem can easily snap, it can easily break. So that's the first problem that it creates. The second problem that that can create is that it makes it more difficult for you to carve. It's far more straightforward for us to carve with the grain as opposed to trying to carve against it. And when you're starting out certain woods, you don't have as great an issue with, with that. Timbers like uh, what we call in the UK flower in lime, what is known in the US as basswood, all members of the linden family, those ones are easy carving wood and you will get away to a degree with carving against the grain. But this one here is a piece of oak, recycled oak, and you want to ideally be working with the grain as much as possible. Don't forget to mention the support underneath the spoon as well, the block of wood. Yeah, Dad is just referring to there, um, he's just referring to the block underneath. You can see where I move that back and forth. So if you have, if you decide that a similar setup to the one we've got, if you decide to go for a similar setup, yeah, it's, it's worth noting that if I'm carving on this side of the spoon, then I move the block to there. If I'm working on this side of the spoon, I move that block over here. So you've got support underneath whatever you're carving all the time. So that's another little bit to work on. So you can see what I've done, I've created that stop cut. So we've created our barrier. We then use that stop cut to cut down into the wood. So that acts as a barrier and it gives us that depth in our carving. So that is coming on quite nicely. What we're gonna do from here, we're gonna start doing some shaping. So we're gonna round off Excuse me, we're going to round off the edges, just like so. And that gives us a sort of beveled edge to our love spoon. Again, there are no rules and regs. You may decide that's something that you like and you want to do a similar thing. You may decide that you prefer it flat. When it comes to the finishing, and I'll demonstrate after, we're gonna sand this, and then we'll, we'll put a bit of shlack on there as well for you. So we are gonna shape, we're gonna shape this, and it'll make it all nice and, it'll round it off, which, which gives it a really nice finish. But again, it's, it's down to sort of personal preferences. Now you may notice, we've just got, where I've cut in there, we've just got a few little, few little nicks in the wood just for there, which for anybody starting off, that may seem, may be something that you find a little bit alarming, but it's really nothing to worry about. All you do, we'll just come down here and we will, we'll do it properly later, but you just bevel the edge and take it out. That's the advantage, that's my style of carving, is two bevel the edges and things like that. Um, you don't have to again. The advantage of doing that is if you do get any splinters or anything, you know, you get a little piece of wood does come up, that's all you do. You just bevel the edges and shape it and you'll get a, a nice finish. Again, we're just carving down on our stop cut because what we got, we've got some splinters just left over that haven't completely come out. So by carving deeper into the wood, we're making our stop cut bigger and those little bits of wood that are left over, we can cut away. So if you're learning wood carving, that's something that you, you can do. If you have a little bit of um, wood that doesn't come away from your stop cut when you cut down, you make your stop cut bigger. You cut further into the woods. Now then, we've done this sort of effect here is like a twist on the stem. Um, what we're doing then is it goes under, it goes under and over. So we've done this side and we're gonna do the same this side. So again, we're using, we're using that stop cut as our barrier. 
And what we're creating the effect of, that the, this twist goes under and over. That's the, the effect that we're trying to create. So we just take out little bits of, from that stop cut again, use that as a barrier, working into the edge, cutting down into the wood again. Here we are, just like so. And again on this one, we're cutting down into our stop cut, slightly, slightly further into the stop cut, making it slightly deeper into the woods. One thing as well, when you're starting out, it's getting a balance where you don't want to go too far with your stop cut, because if you take off too much, you can make it a little weak and, and fragile, and that then can, can actually cause your love spoon to break. I, I would say a quarter to, to a third at most down into your piece of wood for your stop cut. Because if you go right down, you're gonna break it and you're gonna make your spoon fragile. This, these are little things you're always thinking of when you're doing your wood carving. Wood needs strength. So in order to keep that strength, to keep that strength, you, you must avoid then carving too deep into the wood, otherwise you lose that strength. And something you'll see a lot, you know, in wood carving, um, and I, I see it a lot in love spoon carving, where strength isn't always taken into consideration. You, you've got to try your best to, to sort of carve your love spoon. Well, this comes into designing which again, we'll do another live demonstration of designing and talk you through some of the things we're thinking of. But when you're designing, you have to think, how do we keep strength? How do we keep strength in what we're doing? Because if your design's too fragile, unfortunately, your carving is more likely to break. Now, I just brought that up a little bit in the vise because we've got to finish off as I said, I like to bevel the edges. And interestingly there, we're just going a, a bit against the grain here. But it's okay. We've got a good sharp gouge and it'll do the job, no problem. So we're just beveling the edges of the heart, just like so. And in terms of the gouges, when you're starting out, don't spend too much money when it comes to gouges, don't buy lots and lots of gouges that are possibly lower quality. You're far better off getting one or two really good quality gouges and a coping saw perhaps and a clamp to hold your carving down. To start off, that, that, that should be enough. There's lots that you can do. You need one, if you're doing spoons, you need one curved gouge for doing the bowl of the spoon. You also then need one like we're working with here that's fairly straight, in fact. But that is, that one there, we do a lot of carving with. It's very good for shaping. There we go, you can see it's just working. Just like so. Now, we're getting towards the end of our carving, but there's still a few other stages that we go through. Because before I finish the top of the heart, we're gonna work on the stem. So, what I'm gonna do to finish off the stem in terms of the carving, I'm gonna sand, just gonna sand this around. So we're just shaping, we're just shaping that and we're giving it a more rounded off finish, which I personally like. But that's down to individual preference. You may decide that you prefer to leave it off the gouge. That's what you decide. There's no right or wrong. You can do that however you want to. 
I'm just going to put it on the top there, just to make it easier to sand. And if you notice, again, the same with the carving, when it comes to the sanding, you are working with the grain. So if you go across like that, you're going to scratch. You're going to scratch it in the finish. And this sandpaper is a P120, and it's actually, it's an old piece of sandpaper that I've taken from the belt sander. Cut it up after it's no longer any use on the belt sander, cut it up and carried on using it. Now we're nearly there, because what I'm going to do, we're going to go down the grade now, and we're going to go to this grade of sandpaper here. So we're just going to sand that round. This one is a P320, so a finer sandpaper, just to give us a nicer finish. Yeah, pretty happy with that one there. That's it. And this one here, it's a recycled piece of oak that we're working in. It has a beautiful modulary ray to it, a lot of character in this piece of wood. You can see we're just shaping the top of that there. Again, trying to work with the grain as much as possible. Yeah, it has a beautiful modulary ray and it, it finishes really nicely. In terms of sourcing this, we had it from some old furniture. So this was an old, old piece of furniture from a local furniture sale. And that's good because you don't have to worry about seasoning the timber. Excuse me, we're gonna do a video in the next month or so showing how we actually season timber. That'll be an explanation of the process that we go through when seasoning timber, having it in from logs and trees, from our local tree surgeon, and that sort of thing. But when it comes to, yeah, when it comes to, to this one here, um, when it's from furniture, we already know that that wood has actually been seasoned. So we don't have to worry about seasoning it again. Now, for everybody who's, who's watched this demonstration, what we're gonna do, we're gonna, just use some shellac, and I'm gonna put a coat of shellac on there. When we would finish this, if you're, if you're learning different methods for finishing your, your spoons, one that we use, well, the main one we use is shellac, sand, and sealer. We use fiddy shellac, and we would put three coats of shellac, sand, and sealer. And the reason I'm gonna shellac it for you is so you can see how, how the grain and the character of the wood, how it comes up. It's just so you get an idea of what the finished love spoon will look, look like. We have actually got a little bit more work on this. We, we need to be, um, we've got a little, little bit of work because we haven't actually shaped the back of the bowl. So we, we, need to, we need to shape the back of the bowl. That's another little job that we've got to do. But just shellacking it like this is to give you all an idea of um, what this love spoon is gonna look like. The, the booty in the grain of the bowl here is. That's right, as, dad, that. as Dad's it's mentioned. It's, 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 just, it's just a treat. Yeah, that there then, so you see all the character and all the, that particular piece of wood, that's a beautiful piece of wood. Um, and you can see then, you know, what we've done in terms of the carving. You start off with that flat and you end up with that effect, that twist on the stem. This love spoon, we have, we, we put this in our online, uh, our online love spoon shop and we, the name in the description, the name of it is a Welsh word, kutch. Kutch is like a, a cuddle, um, you know, so it's, it's an affectionate name. The reason that we give it that name, a kutch, you've got this twist on the stem. It's a sort of Celtic twist, and one interpretation for that is it represents binding and growing together. And so you've got the heart. Quite often we put two initials in the heart to finish it off. 
the twist on the stem representing binding and growing together. And one interpretation for the bowl is it's mixing and blending. It's bringing ingredients, bringing people together. So, so that is the idea and the, and the message. Because the love spoon, that's what it does. It betrays a little bit of a message. So hopefully that little demonstration, hopefully that's useful. Um, any comments or anything, feel free to put that in the comments section below. If you've got any requests, if you're learning wood carving and you want to know about anything, feel free to ask us and we'll uh, be more than happy to do a video based on uh, what you're doing, based on what you'd like to know. Thank you all for watching and yeah, hopefully we're carving a piece of oak, of course grows from acorns and acorns grow into mighty oaks. So hopefully this is the start today, these live streams of, um, of us going forward and doing some live streaming and hopefully it'll be useful. Thank you all for watching.